Guy Gardner is your typical hot-blooded American male and Tommy of the DC Universe. Hey gamers, I'm K-Wing and welcome to the Let's Play channel. How y'all doing? Before we start, smash that like button for this lore series and tell your friends. Okay, so this minifigure is your typical Green Lantern, except of course he shoots chickens. I'm serious, he shoots chickens instead of whatever else, Rays. Now, Guy is a character that's part of the Bizarro World Pack DLC for LEGO Batman 3, which is based on the new LEGO movie that released on February 10th, starring Bizarro and the Justice League. In the movie, Guy is a cocky superhero that keeps getting his butt kicked. He's also referred to by the League as a rookie. Well, of course, minus Cyborg, who's also a rookie in the film. Later in the movie, when his powers get duplicated by Lex's duplicator ray, his opposite, Green Zaro, is a coward and creates teddy bear constructs. Now, Guy is actually kind of offended that the guy is such a wimp, but later Green Zaro does some pretty awesome things. Now, just a little history on Guy Gardner. He was created by John Broom and Gil Kane in 1968. In the beginning, he was written as Hal Jordan's backup or sidekick. Guy comes from Baltimore and was a product of a broken home torn apart by alcohol. As a teenager, he became a juvenile delinquent and worked out some issues, mainly by becoming a football player in high school and reading comic books. Also, because of the comic books he was reading, he modeled his full haircut after one of his comic heroes. I bet you didn't know this, but Guy's dream was to actually become a teacher. Eventually, he gets his wish and teaches kids with disability, which eases some of his tension, making him like a gentle puppy, well, around kids. When he's around the bad guys, he's all Mr. Serious. Now, Guy actually remained Hal Jordan's backup lantern until he was hit by a bus during an earthquake in the 70s, which uh, he was actually trying to save his students from harm, so he was being pretty cool. Due to him being out of action, though, the Guardians elected Jon Stewart to become Jordan's new backup lantern, until, of course, Guy would return after going through uh, some changes. I really don't like the story of his return because Hal Jordan steals Guy's girlfriend of many years after they think Guy is dead. And Hal Jordan already had a thing with Carol Ferris, so yeah, I don't like cheaters personally. I, I think they're the scum of the universe. Anyway, after Guy's uh, battery blew up in his face in that storyline that made Hal a cheater, not long after the bus incident, Guy was uh, thrown into the Phantom Zone and tortured by Zod and other inmates for a very long time. After being freed from the Phantom Zone, Guy then suffered brain damage and developed a different personality. Just what personality am I talking about? Well, the one that I'm sure you all are familiar with. DC Comics gave uh, Guy some new writers and a massive ego to boot for the 1980s. For a while, Guy actually becomes a bad guy. Well, anti-hero. Everybody hates him, okay? He's a jerk. He's arrogant, he's childish, no one likes him. Of course, this was all a side effect from being tortured in the Phantom Zone. Now, Guy plays a part in Crisis on Infinite Earths and afterwards starts recruiting bad guys because, well, he's not all there. He's given a new power ring by some bad guy guardians and he's more powerful than ever before and doesn't need to charge his uh, ring anymore, so no more you know, uh, exploding batteries in his face. Some stuff happens, Sinestro is executed, and most of the Green Lanterns in the universe end up losing their powers because of that act. Except for Hal, Guy, Kilowog, and a handful of others across the universe. Guy then gets a new thuggish look during this time, which was actually typical fashion for the 1980s. So ripped jeans, leather boots, and outlandish jackets. Guy Gardner is famous in the world of Batman, though, for being knocked out in one punch by the Dark Knight. Guy uh, basically challenged Batman for leadership of the new Justice League International, and Batman KO'd him in front of the Justice League in one punch, and everybody is like, DUDE! Later, Guy shows a softer side when he falls in love with Ice in the Justice League International comics. Once she dies, though, in the line of duty, he quits the League and becomes all mopey. Also during his time on the team, he declares Superman his rival, and Clark is kind of like, okay. Now I know what you're all thinking. Why would Mr. Ego have an issue with the Big Blue Boy Scout to begin with? It's simple. His girlfriend Ice was in love with Superman before she dated Guy. Hence why Guy doesn't really feel comfortable around Mr. S. Ice actually does eventually choose Guy, and the two are pretty happy together until her passing which the writer of Justice League International at the time was kind of like, I think that was a bad idea because she was a pretty cool female heroine. And DC was like, yeah, we'll bring her back later. Once she dies though, Guy becomes like super mopey again and leaves Earth. 
He really loved this girl so much that he actually spent the time to learn how to speak Norwegian to her since, you know, English wasn't her native tongue. While away from Earth doing Green Lantern Guardian business stuff, Guy goes back to Sector 2814 and fights Hal Jordan to get the title of Green Lantern once again. Before they throw down though, he bets to Jordan, hey, if I lose, because I know I'm gonna beat you so bad, I will give you my power ring and resign from the Green Lantern Corps. And Hal is like, you know what? I hate you, so let's do this. He actually defeats Guy, which everybody in the superhero community is like, what? And then Guy becomes powerless and just a normal flesh-like man. But the odd thing is, he doesn't stop being a superhero. He just goes around beating up people like Batman with his bowl cut. And I'm just thinking, why did this guy have a bowl cut in the 90s? Seriously. Eventually, through some odd events, a uh, guy gets powers again by stealing Sinestro's power off his corpse on Oa. And that was just messed up. Don't ask me how he does it, but he tricks Lobo, the bounty hunter, into giving him a ride to Quard, you know, Sinestro's home, where he learns that the yellow power ring is actually on Oa. So once he gets the ring, he becomes more powerful, and he even fuels his ego even more for the DC Universe. He even gets his own book, where he's, uh, you know, using the yellow power ring. Guy returns to Earth, wants to pick a fight with Superman once again to show that, man, I'm bad, but instead uh, joins the League to fight Doomsday. And pretty much everyone in the League is defeated, and Superman has to show up. Later in Metropolis, Guy Gardner arrives to find Doomsday beaten and Superman dead. During the whole reign of the Superman thing, which I told you guys about in the Cyborg Superman and Superboy video, Guy actually endorses Eradicator as the new Superman and the real deal, only to be really salty later on when he meets hippie Superman, so Superman with the really long hair. Also similar to Spider-Man in the 90s, Guy also gets a clone, except more twisted than Guy. So his clone kills people and acts like an evil twin of Guy. Guy then takes on a new persona called the Warrior, and uh, he becomes a superhero after being cleared of all the murder charges. Now, in the 90s, I, I mentioned this before, um, Guy Gardner suffers the Tommy Syndrome. So, you know, a character that actually loses and then gains their powers, in a sense. For a while, he's a Yellow Lantern, then he wears an exosuit from Ted Kord, then he loses that and gets something else. So you see where I'm going with this. Also, his narrative is mostly like, man, I'm losing my powers, which sucks, and I wish I could help you guys, but I can't because I'm like a torn teenager with attitude and I'm losing my powers, blah, blah, blah. After how Jordan goes crazy and becomes like Parallax or whatever, and is destroying most of the universe, Papa Smurf, the leader of the Guardians, offers Guy the last power ring, which Guy refuses, and that's why Kyle Rayner got Hal Jordan's power ring and became a Green Lantern, because Guy said, no way. During a fight with the evil Hal Jordan, Guy is almost killed and depowered once again and laments on, you know, not having superpowers. He then goes on some journey of self-discovery, drinks some alien water, and develops superpowers once again. Now, oddly enough, the writers for uh, Guy's 90s books at that time were fans of Mighty Morphin Power Rangers. I'm not lying. So that's why you can see so many similarities with Tommy. They were fascinated by the uh, Green Ranger character and the fact that he kept losing his powers and getting weaker all the time, then gaining different powers, and that became the backbone for Guy's character. Uh, one of his powers was actually the ability to morph any object he wanted to, and, you know, he was kind of like a shape changer, except he could create weapons by morphing. He couldn't summon Zords, though. He stays this way for years, actually, and travels through space as the warrior. He meets up with Fire, Ice's best friend, and while they're inebriated, they make a mistake together because they both really miss Ice so much. Some strange stuff happens, and uh, then of course Green Lantern Rebirth happens, and Guy gets a massive overhaul, becomes a Green Lantern again, and he's no longer more phenomenal. So you can all thank uh, Jeff Johns for making Guy somewhat normal again. Uh, as a Green Lantern after Hal Jordan's resurrection, it's also the story where Guy Gardner becomes an elite Green Lantern and the leader of the entire Corps. So he's totally completed the Green Ranger transformation to White Ranger. Then writer Jeff Johns takes Guy's character in another light and does some really amazing things. Guy becomes the leader of the Green Lantern Honor Guard, and Guy Gardner and his team are able to assist in the defeat of Superboy Prime, which is a bad character during Infinite Crisis. 
They then trap him in a Sun Eater prison because of Donna Troy. And Guy is so serious about keeping Superboy Prime locked up for good, he's ordered 50 honor guards, like the most elite of the elite, to watch over Superboy Prime's prison. Jeff Johns even said that during an interview that Guy Gardner is not an idiot like people think he is. He's cool, calculating, and like a total hero. During the whole DC one year later thing, Guy is busy being the boss of the Lanterns and doesn't take any downtime. Well, it's not like he has a social life though, folks. The Guardians then promote him again as a leader of an unknown, more elite Lantern army just called Black Ops, which Hal Jordan doesn't even get an invite to, nor does Kyle Rayner. It's all about Guy. Guy is uh, vital in the final defeat of Parallax, so that weird entity that made Hal Jordan go crazy during the Sinestro Corps War. After that war and he's recovering on Earth, he actually learns that Ice is alive again, which really surprises him because she was the reason that he had the whole Tommy Syndrome in the first place. Uh, he meets up with her in New York City after she froze Central Park to make a safe place for children to laugh and play after the whole crazy war stuff. The two actually end up dating for a little bit, but now the super focused guy is called back by the Guardians to lead like the Lanterns once again. So he begs Ice to come live with him on Oa and she declines because she's like, you know what, I just kind of came back to life and, you know, I need to work out my own personal feelings and I can't go with you. So uh, an important thing to note about uh, Guy, he actually in the 90s when Kyle Rayner became a Green Lantern, he became kind of like a mentor and friend figure to Rayner. And when the kid is killed during the Blackest Night zombie DC thing, Guy goes nuts and transforms into Zeal Ranger 5 Red. I mean a Red Lantern, who essentially goes crazy with rage after his little buddy is killed right in front of him. It takes the planet Mogo in order to turn Guy back into a Green Lantern. Some other stuff happens that nobody really cares about, and uh, of course we get into the new 52, and Guy's origin is a little bit different. And this, his dad is a pretty bad parent to him still, giving him a lot of, like, daddy issues. Uh, Guy in this universe is also a former police officer turned Green Lantern. And like Jeff John's early work, Guy is promoted to a different type of lantern, so he becomes a Sentinel Lantern, and of course leads the Corps once again. He and Ice also had a relationship when he was part of the Justice League, but the Tommy Syndrome continues to play out for Guy. Even in this universe, it's like he's been typecasted forever now. Uh, basically, after an escort mission goes really bad, the Guardians demand Guy take the fall for them and give up his powers. And uh, after this, he has a falling out with his family, he gets arrested, goes through some hard times, and somehow makes it back into space to confront the Guardians, whom we find out are actually really evil. And it's like, what? So a few more Lantern Wars happen and Guy becomes a Red Lantern once again, like he was in the pre-52 for a little bit. Though originally, he goes there because Hal Jordan says, hey, I need you to go undercover and check these guys out. So he overthrows Atrocid as the leader of the Red Lanterns and Master, and becomes the new leader and gives the Lanterns a new direction, kind of like, what he did with the Green Lantern Corps. And Hal Jordan, which he has like this new role that I still don't understand, has the ability to give the Red Lanterns a sector to protect. And that becomes, guess what, Earth. Much to Guy's cringe and he's kind of like, oh, so many issues on Earth, why? Not long after becoming Earth's protector, Guy and Ice meet up again and that's all I know about the new 52. In other media, like Batman Brave and the Bold, Guy played a massive part in the series, but he was portrayed as kind of an idiot with a heart of gold. He's not the leader of the core, and even the squirrel outranks him in this show. So if you know who the Green Lantern squirrel is, high five. He joins the Justice League International in place of Hal Jordan because Jordan's busy, and of course he gets knocked out by Batman in one punch. Unlike the comics, he actually likes fire and ice, but mostly fire. He hits on her a lot. And Ice actually has a thing for Aquaman, who's married, but she likes that he's super powerful, good looking, and all this other stuff. Eventually, near the end of the series, she turns her attention to Guy, just like in the comics. And that's it, that's all, ladies and gentlemen. I hope you guys have enjoyed the Green Ranger that is Guy Gardner. Thanks for watching. Uh, the lore videos were put on hold for a while due to my voice, which uh, I'm still recovering, but uh, I'm doing my best. I hope you all have a great rest of your week. And thanks for watching. Don't forget to hit the like button for the Green Ranger of the DC Universe. Until we meet again, God bless and happy gaming.